All right, let's play Castlevania Judgment. What? Why can't I skip the intro? What? What, what button do you push to skip the intro? I'm pushing every button. You can't, you can't, you can't skip the intro? Ugh. For a while, I thought my Wiimote was broken. It wasn't until I realized that I had my GameCube controller plugged in. The game disables your Wiimote nunchuck if it happens to notice that there's a GameCube controller plugged in. So basically, it's saying that the Wiimote nunchuck's controls suck, so you shouldn't use them. And I agree. Let's play. Castlevania. Judgment. I haven't played a Castlevania game since the NES days. That had to have been about 20 years ago. Wow, I am old. The last game that I played was Simon's Quest, and unlike other reviewers, I kind of liked it. It was more about figuring out secrets than mindlessly killing enemies and traveling through stages. I was surprised when I saw this was a fighting game instead of a normal platforming game. And this kind of depressed me a little. I wanted to play a regular Castlevania game, not a fighter, but I'll roll with it. I've only owned two fighting games in my life, Ronma 1 Half Hard Battle and Super Smash Bros. Brawl. I know that some people out there don't consider Super Smash Bros. Brawl a fighter, but a party game. But to stop the argument here, let's say it's both. The argument is about as interesting to me as the one if Yoshi's a boy or a girl. Look, she's got no junk! Anyways, back to Castlevania. The graphics were nice for a Wii game. I didn't notice any slowdown in the frame rate, which is extremely important in a fighter. The only time I noticed a slowdown was in selecting a character. It would take a few seconds to load the looks of each character, which was a bit strange. The controls were simple enough on a GameCube controller, but if you try and use the Wiimote and Nunchuck, it will be a waggle fest, and your hand will get tired very fast. You can look at the move list anytime you want, so that's helpful if you're just starting out. There were many options to choose from, but it was all basically the same thing, fighting. I spent most of the time playing this game in the story mode. Now, fighters aren't exactly known for having the most gripping stories, and this one follows in that trend with a story that is basically forgettable. They start you out with a couple paragraphs to read. It's a basic backstory on the character you choose. The character that you've chosen has entered a time rift. You have to battle for some reason other people who have entered the rift, so you can stop the person who has created the rift in the first place. As you battle the other people in the time rift, you have to wonder why they're even fighting each other in the first place. Let's say I was trapped in a time rift. In this scene, you're going to be in a time rift. What exactly is a time rift? A rift in time. OK, thanks. I got it now. Start scene. Oh, no, I'm in a time rift. Now I'm in this time rift and I have a bunch of people with me. The first thing that I would do is work with them to try and escape, not start fighting them. As you go through the fight, sometimes you'll talk to some of the characters ahead of time. The problem with this is that sometimes what they were saying didn't make any sense. I ask you, show me the power of a true vampire hunter. Pardon the lady, but I will not fight a woman. Excuse me, this is actually the third woman you've come across in battle. You didn't seem to have a problem fighting the other two, but now you get all noble? Like I said before, all the modes were about the same. Arcade versus survival. It was just a different name for the same basic concept of fighting each other. I did like the special attacks in the game if you had enough power. It was just a cutscene that ended up with your opponent losing a substantial amount of health. Come on, everybody! At the end of every match, the winner would taunt the losing opponent. The vampire killer will cleave your soul! I do know that this is pretty standard for a fighter, but it is still strange. Your opponent is on the floor, hurt and dying, and all you can do is gloat. The only mode that's a little bit different is the castle mode. You go from door to door, and you have to have a certain goal to finish before you can get to the next door. This mode was an interesting idea, but I wish they had expanded on it a little bit more, by actually making a castle we had to explore instead of just the doors. There is also an online mode, and it was easy enough to find a game. It ran smooth enough to be enjoyable, so you will find it fun. You can play the game with or without a friend code, so that's always a plus. To round out the extras, you can also unlock different things for your characters to wear while fighting. Also, in the options, you can listen to the music of the stages, look at some of the unlocked artwork, and as an even more special bonus, you can listen to the ring announcer's voice clips. Ooh. Round 7. Round 8. Round 9. 
awesome. Castlevania Judgment is not a bad game. The only real problems I had with it were that the moves were too easy to pull off and there wasn't that many moves that you could do. This game could be fun if you're looking for a game to kill the weekend with. Well that's it, my review of Castlevania Judgment. And I thought I would end this review the same way the fighters end their matches. I thought this game is worth a rent.